Well, they're known as the money couple. Bethany and Scott Palmer are both certified senior advisors, as well as holding numerous licenses in the investment planning field. They have been regulars on Good Morning America and ABC News, as well as featured guests on James Robison, 700 Club, Focus on the Family, and many others. And they're here today with their book, First Comes Love, Then Comes Money, A Couple's Guide to Financial Communication, where they'll be helping all of us, among other things, discover our money personality. Bethany and Scott, welcome to Full Circle. Thank, Thank you. you. It's, it's great, great to, to be, be here. here. Scott, are you ready for this with all I the am, ladies? I am a little outnumbered, <laughs> and I will. I'll be fine. Okay. You'll, you'll survive. You'll <laughs> That's survive. Right. That's right. Okay, now, right off the top, in your book, you say that your attitude about money affects all areas of your life. It does. It affects the decisions that we make, especially the decisions that we make together. All of my kids, where we're going to live, housing, everything. The money creeps into it. And oftentimes we think, oh, well, I'm the money person in the relationship, so I'm going to take care of it. And that's not what we're talking about because you do need to have a budget, and you need to have a retirement plan, you do need to have an insurance plan, you need to have all that. But how important it is to learn how to talk about money because it affects all the decisions. Getting on the same wavelength. Yeah. And oftentimes we forget that that getting on the same wavelength is so important. Now you use some shocking words where you say financial infidelity. Oh, no. Ooh. <laughs> like when you use that in the book, I was like, yikes. It is. Well, it's the word infidelity. And that right. doesn't make anybody comfortable. I don't care who you are. <laughs> so, but when you throw finances in it, it makes you really step back. And one of the things that Bethany and I, as we've worked with thousands of couples and worked through light issues and worked through heavy issues, is that we don't think about the fact that we have a financial relationship. Mm -hmm. We just want to make it all checks and balances. But we have this thing that is our financial relationship. And if I'm lying to Bethany about money, or she's lying to me about money, that is infidelity. And if you look at the fact that 70% of all divorces are due to money, they are due to finances. And financial conflict. And financial yeah. conflict. That, that, will, that just proves to us that we don't see it as the most important or one of the most important aspects of our relationship because it's never been positioned that way. And we all do, well, most of us, I'll admit it, do a little bit of lying in our relationship when it comes to money. Like, I did it a couple of weeks ago, and I'm like, here, I'm committing, I'm the money couple, and I'm committing financial mm -hmm. infidelity. But I said that I was only going to spend a small amount at the store. I spent more, and I didn't tell him. And that's financial infidelity. You know, those little things. And then the other day, we met with a couple, and there was a $35,000 credit card that the spouse was hiding from that's the other. That's massive financial Now, that's wow. big financial yeah. infidelity. So you've got yeah. big and small. But, but we all do it in little ways because we're selfish. I mean, we want to do what we want to do. Mm -hmm. And so that financial infidelity is a word that we've phrased together to identify it. And it plays havoc on our relationships. So let me, it really does. Go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead, Mary. They're so. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> let me just be clear. Sure. In, in this 70% statistic, is the issue the money trouble mm -hmm. that they get into, or is it the breach of trust? It, that's a very, yeah, very good question. question. It's a breach of trust, mm -hmm. but it's not coming to money and agree, coming to it and understanding each other in the way that we come to m look at money. We all look at money differently. God makes us different. If you're a spender, which I am, and Scott, we're both spenders, we love to spend. Already There's nothing, on. yeah, exactly. <laughs> Woo! We love, we love to have fun. Oh, yeah. We're, we're all about, about the fun. Yeah. <laughs> we are the party, she says. But, but so we understand that about each other. But our secondary money personality, which we're going to talk about them in a minute, is opposite. So there is a blend. Abs yes. There's absolutely, absolutely a blend. When you brought that up earlier, I was like, she gets it. Yes, totally mm -hmm. gets it. So he's, Scott is a security seeker and I'm a risk taker. So here we think we get a lot about, uh, together about money, we get along, but then we'll have these conflicts. Like I'll see a, an investment opportunity, I mean, I'm right in there, I'm like, well, let's go. And Scott's like, whoa, 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 let's do the research. And so we have that, we don't have that understanding, that foundational understanding, and a budget will not fix that. And I think oh. that's part of the lie that we've bought into. Mm -hmm. I think that we've all decided our budgets are budgets a necessity. Absolutely. Yes. I'm a financial planner and I'm not saying they're not important because <laughs> I really want a job. Like, um, but uh, the budgets are important and the investments are important. All those things are so important. But what we've done is we've said that's how we can manage our relationship. Mm -hmm. 
we can manage our relationship by a piece of paper. And we have so many couples that come into us that have the perfect budget because we help create them. And, <laughs> but there's so much strife and there's so much anger and there's just so much of this in their relationship happening all the time. And it's because this person or this person didn't buy into that budget. Mm. And if you don't have mutual buy-in for that, it's never going to work and that's how your relationship well, will end. What I love in your book is you really do encourage us to get to know our own individual yes. money personalities mm -hmm. yes. and then discover our mates yes. and then see how we can work together. Yes. So I think we have uh, the money personalities. We want to bring them up on the screens okay. just so everyone is clear. Okay. What are we looking at okay. here? There's five money personalities. We have a saver, a spender, risk taker, security seeker, and then the last one is a flyer, and we all know flyers. Flyers are the people who fly by the seat of their pants, don't really care about money. It's kind of like if you don't have any clue what your money personality is, you probably have a little bit of flyer in there because you just don't think about it. It's not part of who you are. And we find that if you have four of the five money personalities inside of your relationship, which can happen, because if one person, for now we just have three because we're both primary spender, risk, risk taker, security seeker, so we have three. But oftentimes there's four inside of a relationship. It's really confusing. Mm -hmm. And it's very confusing, especially like for Scott, for example, he's a spender security seeker. Doesn't that seem like that's opposite? Mm -hmm. He spends mm -hmm. money, but he's a security seeker. So we call it polar opposite. Well, for the other person, that can be kind of confusing. I have, told, I have a, a major issue with buyer's remorse because I'm a spender, but then I'll do the spending and I'm driving home going, oh, why did I buy that? I didn't really need that. And well, I didn't. And I go through this whole head talk and I'm miserable to shop with. I mean, I hate shopping pretty much anyways, but Bethany will go shopping, we'll be all excited. On the way home, I'll just say, well, I don't know if we should have done that. And she's like, well, that you just killed it. You just yeah. killed that, that fun memory. And so Thank that you. would be the, the, seeker, the, the, security, the security seeker, seeker. in you. And so talking. often okay. what we find is that people will have what appears to be an opposite money personality. They might, we have spender, saver money personalities. So they love to spend, but saving is really important to them. And so those personalities not only internally can be confusing, but you put all four of those money personalities into a relationship and it it can cause and a lot of damage. your past and the household mm. that you grew oh, up in a play point. a role in that? That is, mm. that's a great question. And we find, a lot of people ask too, is do you change money personalities as you grow? We find that really God gives us our money personality. Mm. It's part of who we are and you can see the reflections of it even as a child. When you were a child and you got a dollar, did you take it and put it in your pocket and go spend it? Or did you take it and put it in your piggy bank? I mean, you to, can to see, let to let it grow. I wouldn't got bigger. candy Okay, spend her right rolls. here. Spend her right here. <laughs> right. Yeah. Now you can learn other aspects of the positive parts of money personalities because there's no wrong and no right money personality. A lot of times people are like, oh, I'm a saver and you're a spender. And no, 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 no. There's no right and there's no wrong one. And the thing that's great to realize is that you can instill things inside of you to help you get through some of the challenges of a money personality. So we're both spenders, but we save. I mean, we have automatically comes out of our checking account to make sure that it, it happens. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't happen if we didn't have that discipline. Mm -hmm. But we have to learn the pros and cons. So do you have this conversation then? I mean, obviously money is such a, you know, scary topic, you know, to talk about. So is it wise to say you should have this talk before you get married or as you're dating, have a serious discussion? Absolutely. And why do we not like to talk about that at the key stages of relationship? Uh, well, I think it's because it is so scary. I mean, if you're on your second date and you go, so, do you have any debt? <laughs> the other person's going, well, they either have a lot of debt or they hate debt. Yeah. How do I answer this question? Right. And right. then it just gets awkward yeah. right. right there. Right. Relationship and so, killer, right? It, it yeah. is. It is. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's like moving furniture on the first date in some houses. <laughs> That's just odd. Okay. So, but what, what we do with the money personalities is it's a great way to start talking about money. Because you're not saying, hey, let me see your, let me see your checking book or, you know, do you have student loans? So what you can do instead, it says, is, instead is say, hey, listen, here's my money personality. This is what, this Put is who I am. First. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then what happens often is somebody go, really, I didn't even know that we had money personalities. And then you start into this discussion mm -hmm. and it really becomes something very light, but it's very revealing. Because if you are a security seeker, if you are a saver, and the other person is a spender and a risk taker, it's not bad. There's no right or wrong money personality. But 
Finances is gonna be a struggle unless you really learn how to talk about it. And then as the relationship progresses, then you can say, you know, hey, I'm a security seeker or I'm a saver. I know you're not. Can we talk about this, how this is gonna affect our marriage if we get married, how it's gonna affect our savings and some of those issues. But starting off with the money personalities is the best way to start working through those issues. And 60% of people marry their opposite. Yep. Mm. personality. Mm -hmm. That's what we're finding across the board. So right there, if you're not identifying that opposite, you really have challenges. For example, you can have a woman who's a saver and he's a spender and he buys her all these flowers and takes her out to nice restaurants and she just loves it because it's so new and exciting and then they get married. And those flowers and those expensive restaurants aren't looking quite so attractive anymore. And so those challenges that come up because we don't understand our differences, you get married. We have an email we got yesterday from a couple, been married for six months and all they do is fight about money. And she said, I'm a true security seeker saver and he is a true spender flyer. And right there, they have four money personalities right in the middle of their relationship, polar opposites they're having challenges. So how do you move from knowing what your personality is into actually fixing the problem? Well, we have our first uh, thing that we call, we call it a money dump. And actually it's just dumping out or getting out all of the pros and cons inside of your, your relationship. There's always a pro and there's always a con. Yeah. So the first thing that we do, that we'll be doing with this couple that we're meeting with next week is getting on the board and showing them exactly where the conflict's coming from. And that just takes so much pressure off. Yes. Once they actually say, oh, pff, the problem is defined. And then you say, okay, let's sit down and talk about the pros and the cons in your relationship. Mm -hmm. Financially, I, we, had, we had a young couple and the lady looked at me and says, well, we just don't have any pros. And I'm like, yes, you do. <laughs> let's come up with three. You can come up with three of anything. And so we went through those three. You know, okay, did you drive here? Yes. Okay, okay do, does someone have a job in their relationship? Okay, we've got one job. <laughs> and then- Are we alive? You know, that's right. Yes. <laughs> can we afford to breathe? You can? That counts. <laughs> so, it's a, it's a pro and we'll put it down there because we're positive people. So, and then we got to the list of cons. And like 25 minutes later, when we finish that list of cons, but we take them through the pros and the cons. And then we say, listen, this is an overwhelming list, especially for a lot of couples on the cons. Take two. And that's our focus for the next two months, is just those two cons. See, what we wanna do is we wanna define all the problems and say, okay, well, we've got 22 cons. Let's wrap those up by the end of the year. Hmm. It's overwhelming and really in most relationships, it's impossible. But if you can just start with two, you've just improved your financial relationship by 200% in two months. And then what happens is you get that positive momentum going in that relationship and it, it changes everything. We see couples